retractable causal reason. Great. Thank you. Um, so, hello everyone. Uh, just to introduce myself, uh, I'm Benji Wang. Um, I just finished my PhD at uh, the University of Oxford. Uh, I'm here as a research fellow for a semester and then um, next, uh, after this, uh, I plan to start a, a postdoc at UCLA. Um, so yeah, I'm going to talk to you about probabilistic and logical circuits for tractable causal reasoning. Um, I'm very fortunate that uh, I'm I'm talking, speaking to you straight after Yujong, so hopefully circuits will still be still be fresh in your mind. But uh, I'll give you a little bit of a, an introduction to causality, or at least causality as I see it. Um, okay, so. You know, what's my view on what causality is, right? Like there, there's, uh, uh, you know, a lot of people in different fields who would have different interpretations of causality, economists, for example, uh, but I'll just give you my view. So uh, my, my view is essentially you have some underlying mechanical or physical system, which is probably too complex to model, right? Um, and then your sort of um, way of inferring or trying to sort of reason about what's going on in the system is that uh, you sort of observe some probability distribution over, over what's going on in this system. So um, that's represented by this, by, by this uh, yeah, P, P of X over, over some, some set of variables X. Um, but not everything that you want to understand about what's going on in the system, for example, the, the, the questions of why is something happening or what will happen if I change something uh, can be captured in, in this probability distribution. So, my view of sort of causality is as this sort of intermediate abstraction between uh, mechanical sort of physical description of a system uh, and a probabilistic description. So uh, essentially from every sort of mechanical description, you can derive a causal description and uh, from every sort of causal description, you can then derive a, a probabilistic description. Um, and the sort of advantage of doing this is that uh, by working on, on this causal level, you have sort of uh, a richer model and also uh, the ability to, to sort of have a have a richer and more expressive query language. So let me just give you a sort of simple example of this. Um, hopefully, slightly amusing as well. So, um, okay. So so here's here's basically a probabilistic question, right? So on average, uh, what percentage of people fall asleep in a in a CS talk with with no math? Um, so this is very very easy to, to 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 do, right? I can just go around to a load of different CS talks, sort of see if there's math or not in the talk, and then okay, like how many people are falling asleep? I'll just look around the room. Um, so, so this is something you can observe purely from, from this probability distribution, right? Um, but then there are a bunch of questions which you, you can't uh, just, just, just uh, uh, sort of even formulate in terms of the probability distribution. So an interventional question might be, uh, what percentage of, of people in the audience would fall asleep if every speaker was forced to remove all of their math, right? And, and this, this might be different because you know, there may, may, may be some, some correlations between the sort of audiences uh, uh, people are speaking to and, and sort of how, how much math they want to, they want to put in. Um, but yeah, this is something which I can't do you know, just by going around and observing, right? I have to actually go and you know, um, do, do, some, uh, do some prompting to, to some speakers. Um, and then there's this sort of um, counterfactual question, which is uh, what percentage of people would have fallen asleep in this talk if I had removed all my math in this talk? Um, it's probably a bit too late for that, but um, that's another question you can ask sort of once you have the, this richer formalism. So basically the idea is with you know, probabilistic inference, you might have some data, right, describing the distribution that you're, that you're observing along with some, some probabilistic query, and then you come to some conclusions. Um, the difference here is that we have these causal queries which are a little bit more expressive than, than, than purely probabilistic queries, um, and to sort of have have sort of models which are, are capable of sort of differentiating between these 
situations, you need sort of these causal assumptions, which are uh, often encoded as a, as a causal graph like you see here. Um, so I'm going to go over two sort of causal problems, um, which should um, hopefully give you a bit of insight in, into the sort of problems which I'm interested in, in working on. So, um, okay, so first let's sort of formalize what I was saying before. So let's say we have a set of variables X and then we have some uh, disjoint subsets A and Y. Um, and then we're interested in this uh, causal effect, which is uh, essentially the, the probability distribution on, on Y given that you intervene on A, right? And this do A might look a bit weird, but the idea is just that uh, we, this is just like when I was talking about forcing speakers to, to uh, you know, forcing speakers to not include math in, in, in their talks, right? Um, so, you know, in general, this is not going to be the same as, as, as the conditional distribution. And, and this is just basically stating that that correlation is, is not necessarily causation. Um, so the way you can sort of, um, you know, formulate what this means or, or sort of, um, um, you know, or what is this query on, uh, you have, uh, in addition to your probability distribution, you also need to specify these causal assumptions on the system in the form of a causal diagram. So here are sort of two basic examples of causal diagrams where uh, each, each letter is like a, a set of variables, right? And this sort of represents the sort of qualitative causal structure of the, of the, of the, of the domain. So uh, you can view sort of these solid arrows as, as basically direct causation. Right, um, and okay. So given given a causal diagram G, uh, given some some causal query like this P of Y given do A, uh, then in some cases you can actually uh, derive these expressions. Um, and what these expressions are are effectively functions of the data, right? So all of these P are just functions of the of the sort of uh, prob normal probability distribution. But then these sort of formally give you the uh, the give you an expression for for the for this interventional causal effect, um, and the reason we have these two different ones is that these correspond to to what the formulae would be in these two different graphs. So depending on the graph, you get sort of different different functions of the observed distribution. Um, okay, so let's sort of talk about what, what what sort of computational problems we have here. So let's say we have you know, we have this observed distribution P of X, right? Maybe we have some machine learning model, or we have some other model which we've learned from data or, or else somehow we've managed to get this observed distribution. So the question I want to ask is for which causal graphs or, or causal formulae uh, is this causal effect tractable? Um, so this is saying, yeah, for example, if, if you force speakers to, 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 to not have math, then how will this affect the proportion of, of people who, who who fall asleep in the, in the lectures? So, um, Okay, so for example, for, for this backdoor uh, query, which we saw before, it's basically like this, but we put in specific values for Y and A, right? So lowercase just means we, we, we put in specific instantiations for Y and A. Um, and okay, what's sort of interesting here is that, let's say that P is given by a probabilistic circuit. So the sorts of circuits we saw um, uh, just just uh, just before in Yujung's talk. Um, well, it turns out that if, uh, you just want the conditional distribution, P of Y given A, uh, then this is, can be computed in linear time uh, if P is decomposable and, and smooth. So this basically is um, just uses the, the marginal inference algorithm, um, which is described, uh, where you effectively just divide P of Y A with, uh, by uh, P of A. Um, but it turns out this sort of causal effect, this, this interventional uh, effect sort of defined, defined above is actually uh, turns out to be sharply hard to compute, um, even if P satisfies these sort of uh, more stringent conditions. So, um, cool structure decomposability, smoothness, and determinism. So, these um, properties are pretty much as uh, as strong as it gets when it comes to circuits. So, basically, if we can't, uh, you know, if this isn't tractable under these conditions, then we're we're, we're really in trouble. Um, okay, so this is an interesting sort of separation between. Um, just, just these uh, conditionals and, and these causal effects. But um, okay, like, is there some property that we can impose on the circuit? So is there some way we can restrict the space of, of models or circuits that we're looking at such that we can actually compute sufficiently? And it turn, turns out the answer is, is yes. So uh, basically if P is given by 
uh, a structure decomposable in what's called marginally deterministic circuit, uh, then there, there is a, a quadratic time algorithm for, for, for computing this causal effect. Um, and this is quadratic in the size of the circuit, okay? Um, and so the sort of uh, idea behind this marginally deterministic term, I won't go into the full details, but uh, in this case, basically, uh, if you look at the circuit on the left, uh, you'll see that we have two branches at the root node, right? Uh, and on the left branch, we have values of A and Z uh, corresponding to them both being true or both being false. Uh, on the right side, we have values of A and Z corresponding to one of them being true. Um, and so these sort of branches are kind of contradictory with respect to those variables. And, and that's kind of the key condition that you need uh, in order to turn it into a, uh, into a circuit representing this, this, this causal effect, which is what you see on the right. Um, okay, so this is only for the backdoor case, right? So I, sh I showed you the backdoor graph and then the backdoor formula that you get in this case for the causal effect. Uh, but it turns out that for these two other common types of graphs, you can also get uh, these sort of uh, polynomial time uh, algorithms for, for for computing this. So so this is quite nice. We have a sort of we we've what we've done is we've gone in. We sort of tried to figure out what is the restriction we need to put on our class uh, on our sort of class of circuits, uh, and then uh, how how does that lead to a, a, a tractable algorithm for uh, uh, or an efficient algorithm for for computing this. Um, Okay, so now I'm going to talk about the second problem, which um, I'm not going to introduce or, or talk about any causal terms here. Uh, I'm just going to give it purely in, the, in a graphical sense. Um, and then you can talk to me later if you, if, if you want to uh, learn about the causal interpretation. Um, but basically what this problem is, is, okay, so we have some directed acyclic graph G uh, with a weight matrix, and then we want to compute this this matrix and what what this is saying is basically um, you know over all paths from a variable, from a node i to a node j uh, we want the sort of sum over all paths of the products of weights along that path okay um, and you know this is sort of uh, you know quite a simple problem um, in the sense that it can easily be solved by by matrix inversion so um, if you think of this b and b squared and b cubed this is like you know, the contributions from your uh, length one paths and your length two paths and length three paths, and then you get this, this, uh, this matrix inverse, which, which gives you the, the matrix C, right? Um, and I should mention that we want the whole matrix C, so we want all pairs of, we want this for all pairs of IJ. Um, and so, okay, you can apply sort of matrix inversion algorithms and, and that's all, all fine. Um, but let's say now that um, the graph uh, and possibly also the weight matrix, but let's sort of focus on the graph, uh, is given by some probability distribution. Then we want sort of the expectation of this matrix C over this probability distribution, okay? Um, and so, of course, you know, whether this is possible or not depends on what this probability distribution is. Uh, if P is a uniform distribution over DAX, it's likely hard because um, we, we, because, uh, you know, even sort of trying to, trying to represent the uniform distribution over DAGs in any, any kind of tractable manner is, 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 uh, pretty much impossible. Um, but it turns out that, uh, okay. So are there interesting classes of distributions P, um, for which this expectation is tractable? And you know, maybe you can, you can think about this. Um, maybe this pops up in, in some other setting and, and then, and then there, there's some interesting classes of distributions there, but in the specific causal setting uh, that that's uh, motivated this problem, um, it turns out that yes, there, there is a particular type of circuit which is useful representing this probability distribution P uh, under which this expectation uh, turns out to have, have, uh, have uh, an algorithm um, which is uh, N cubed times P where uh, N is the uh, number of vertices in, in, the, in the graph. Um, so, okay, so, so the, the sort of idea here was just to, to give an idea of um, sort of how, you know, causality, you know, is a, is a sort of, is interesting both in terms of, um, you know, both in terms of the application cases, both in terms of sort of, you know, philosophically what it means, but it also gives rise to some, some interesting, uh, interesting computational problems, which, which, which may have some, so some interesting theory behind them as well. Um, okay, so I'll talk a bit about some, some open questions and, and, and topics, uh, and then I'll wrap up. So uh, the first sort of question
question I have here is that um, we've just seen that for a few graphs, so the back door, the front door, and the napkin, um, that actually, you know, under some marginal determinism conditions, um, these causal effects can actually be, be, be computed uh, on circuits uh, in polynomial time. So the natural question then is like, okay, if we look at all possible graphs, right, or all possible graphs where, you know, the causal effect is identifiable, um, is it always like this? And sort of, I, I have reasons to believe no, but um, I haven't proved it. So um, yeah, the next question is, if not, can we sort of somehow characterize this dichotomy between, you know, cases where the causal effect is tractable and cases where it's not uh, in terms of the causal graph? Um, so I also gave you some sort of uh, complexity um, upper bounds for for, for some of these um, cases like the back door, but uh, there are reasons to believe that that, that that we can do better. So for example, um, for the back door case, if you impose a, a, a slightly more restrictive condition, then uh, it actually becomes linear time. Um, but yeah, we, we want to sort of figure out for these certain subclasses of circuits, um, you know, can, can we also show, show lower bounds for complexity, uh, even if it's polynomial time? Um, can, we, can we approximate uh, hard queries efficiently? So, um, you know, uh, uh, for example, for the backdoor case, like uh, if we were just given some circuit which doesn't satisfy the conditions required, or perhaps some, some other representation of the probability distribution, can, can we, uh, in, a, in some sense, approximate, approximate this? Um, and also this, this sort of marginal condition, determinism condition, which I mentioned, um, is actually quite interesting because it's a generalization of um, um, sort of fairly well-known properties in both logical and probabilistic circuits. So, um, for example, strong determinism, decision properties, so very, very related to that and uh, OBDDs and, and things like this. So if we can sort of show that the, these sort of slightly more general circuits are, are more succinct than, than those previous circuits, then that, that will be another, uh, uh, an, another step in the right direction. Um, yeah, but anyway, that's, that's all I had for, for today. So um, yeah, thanks everyone. Thank you very much. <laughs> Any questions? Possible to sample from the space of, of DAGs? Uh, uh, not why, why do you think that's the case? I've never thought about it. But. Uh, not, not impossible. So, um, so from the space of so so firstly, if you have sort of a uniform distribution of over the space of DAGs, if you want to do something like uh, um, you, you know, if you want to do do something like finding finding marginal distributions over over edges, that's 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 going to be hard. Um, and in this case, I'm talking about, um, okay, taking this uniform distribution and then attempting to compute this expectation where each, each possible DAG corresponds to a different one of this, right? So, so, so that, that, that is, uh, um, yeah, the acyclicity condition really, really sort of puts you in trouble. Any other questions? Yeah, thanks again. Thanks indeed to all the speakers of the session and uh, we should give a round of applause to indeed all speakers of the day for really a round of uh, very illuminating and thought-provoking uh, talks on these lovely topics with lots of activity. Thanks everyone. And also thanks to the audience for